Hello. Um, peace of Christ be with you, sister. Peace of Christ be with you, sister. Who are you? I, I am just, you can call me K-Dub. K-Dub. Uh, sister, are you Christian? Uh, yes, I am. Do you believe Jesus is the this. eternal son of the father? Yes, he is the eternal son of the father and Muhammad is a false god. False prophet. Good, mm -hmm. good, good. Um, false prophet. False pro well, he's a false god. To he, he is a really. false prophet. Know. Allah is false god and Quran is false <laughs> book. Um, yeah. Beloved sister, how can I help? Um, I just, I was uh, reading through our scriptures and I found in Matthew 24 and 11 um, a verse that to me, it, it confirms um, well, it, I found I found Mohammed in the scripture. I guess you'd say you found Mohammed in scripture. That means yeah. you are confirming that Quran is book of Allah, and Mohammed is the prophet of Allah. Well, not so fast. You may want to read it first. <laughs> okay, because remember, because Quran states that Mohammed's supposed to be prophesied in the Bible. So if it, not in the Bible, actually in the Torah and in the Injil. If you find Muhammad there, that means mm -hmm. Islam is true religion. So, okay. You said uh, Matthew 24, verse 11. Mm -hmm. Correct? Would you like to read it or would yes. you like me to read it? Um, I can, I mean, I can read it if sure. you like. Yeah. It says, and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. And 1.5 billion people, it seems like many. I think that will fall under the line of many. Yeah. If it's more than five, it will be many. Yes. <laughs> that that's that's the only place in scripture where he's a legitimate um legit legitimately claimed. That's all. Okay. Um is there anywhere else you need to go from this chapter? Because so since Muhammad's supposed to be prophesied in the Bible, um he's prophesied in the gospels as the false prophet coming false prophet that's matthew mm -hmm. chapter 24 i think we can take it from verse 10 to 13 mm -hmm. and okay. then also verse 23 to 25 so uh oh. yeah because uh, in verse 23 it says at that time if anyone says to you look that he that is the christ or that he is do not believe it for False Christ and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect. If yes. that, that were possible, see, I have told you ahead of time. So Matthew chapter 24 is the confirmation or fulfillment of answering the Muslim objections where Muhammad is prophesied in the Gospels. Yes, yes. And also, I mean, I know this, this, you've, you've dealt with this in past, where the God of the Bible, Yahweh, hates divorce. And Allah is just very casual with marriage. What do you mean with casual marriage, sister? <laughs> Halala marriage, muta marriage. Um, um, you in the, in the scriptures, you can't divorce, marry someone else and go back to the original person in the scriptures but halala marriage you can do that sorry um beloved of christ do you mind repeat that for, again for me i'm sorry um in the scriptures in the christian scripture yeah? yes in the well in the yes in the christian bible in the scripture in the bible you cannot divorce person a marry person b Divorce, divorce person B and then go back to person A. But halala marriage is exactly that, right? No, no. no. Is, it, is it halala? Marriage? Yeah, that's halala. Okay. So yes. a couple is married. When man divorces woman, for them to again reconcile the marriage, woman needs to go and marry with someone else. And that someone else, third party, needs to divorce her so that she can come back to her first husband 
to reconcile, correct? Yes. So Bible doesn't give any place to this. No, and, and you actually, I can't remember the scripture. I think it's in Deuteronomy, I believe, or Leviticus, where that particular act is frowned upon by God, Yahweh of the Bible. So. Yeah. And um, when we turn to the Quran, we get to see that Allah is teaching such a things. Surah 2, 230. Yes. Um, do you have a problem with that as a woman, besides it is against the law of God? Do you have any personal um, problem with this? Uh, it's gross. <laughs> it's, it's not, it, as a, the woman is the, the one that, the man can divorce and the woman is the one that ends up paying the most of the costs in terms of having to pay for the halala marriage as well as with her body you you degrade yourself so that was um about halala marriage and then you also talked about something called muta marriage what is that sister um <laughs> it's i mean it's glorified prostitution um um, it's uh, temp the temporary, like a pleasure marriage, you know, and and again, Those that are... goes against the um, that goes against the um, God of Christian Scripture versus it is allowed in Islam. Yes, yes, and I meet a lot of um, Western Christians that think we worship the same God, as well as Muslims that think we worship the same God. And which so you are coming to the those, conclusion you are coming to the conclusion that just even simply looking at the teachings of the looking at the teachings of um, Islam regarding the marriage confirms that Christians and Muslims do not worship the same God. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And um, sister, why are you Christian? Um because Jesus Christ is the truth and the scriptures, uh, it, it's the word of God it, from front to back. So um, by God's grace is why I'm a Christian. That's the only thing I can say. <laughs> by the grace of God. Yeah. yeah. Um, so someone is making a comment i'm really confused with this i'm not even sure if you are christian or muslim but both of the ways are simply wrong so comments is didn't god give adam a nine years old wife and person is very confused i am very confused i think you meant didn't allah give muhammad six years old wife because uh... when we look at the script sorry um when we look at the scripture we get to see that Eve was old enough and capable enough to be responsible for the for garden with Adam. So, like, there is nothing in Genesis account makes us to think that Eve was a child. Uh, she wasn't playing with dolls. Yeah, no, she wasn't playing with the dolls. She didn't know where the baby coming from, all those kind of things. Like, Eve yes. was capable to know what was happening in real world. Yes. Um, yeah, so therefore, I think that comment needs to be rephrased or something. Yes. And I, I mean, I don't want to hold you long, sister. That's that's really um, all I wanted to say. And just God bless you and peace okay. of Christ be with you, sister. Thank you very much, sister, for calling in. All right. God bless. Bye. Bless you. So, um When we look at the accounts of Genesis, when we look at the accounts of Genesis, we see when God creates Adam and Eve, we see God gives responsibility to Adam. Okay. Um, God gives responsibility to Adam and Eve. And Eve is capable to look after the garden. Eve is capable to be in charge of the things so therefore it will be like very very bad theology or bad reading to think 
Eve was just a child, but I I was told that um, beloved brother has a not good sense of humor. I am assuming that that's a British sense of humor because they don't have that much sense of humor <laughs> either. <laughs> anyway, okay. Um, I was going to open up something. Um, since we have been talking about fasting and fisting, I was going to pull down a hadith where we get to see how Muhammad deals with fasting. Let me pick that up. So joining the Ramadan, the idea is that Muslims are not um, allowed to eat, um, allowed to drink, and allowed to have sex between sunrise to sunset. Okay, that's the kind of basic idea. Uh, Therefore, they have to do like all the good things to be able to get there. I was going to show a hadith. So, um, I can't open up internet because it's gonna make my live stream struggle and suffer so what i'll do is i'm gonna put um on my notes where you can see and on on my notes you will see that i do have the references so you can always go and check that out okay let me make this little bit bigger I know, I'm th I am sure you are thinking, is this reference is coming from Saudi with the camel? I think answer is yes. Okay, it's here. It's here. Let me see if you can see my screen. Okay, I need, I shouldn't be on the screen. I need to get rid of myself. Um... So, so according to um, so we can see Brother David kind of put together why when Muslims are hungry they get angry because there is no water, there is no food, there is no sex, there is no... It's too much sacrifice for 30 days, 30 days in a year for Allah. Yeah, that's too much. Therefore, it is very normal to see that they get like so angry because they are hungry. Therefore, we get to see how the KFC is being practiced. How the KFC is being practiced. So, um, here we have a hadith, um, which is kind of reported in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim, where we get to see Muhammad couldn't even wait for day to finish for him to break his fast and start feasting. Remember, Muslims have certain, certain like, the sky needs to be in a perfect form according to Allah so Muslims to fast and um, start fasting and break their fasting um, I did express other night 
in Shia tradition, it's a little bit different. So Shia's, Shia Muslims uh, break their fast approximately 15 minutes after Sunnis. Uh, like in case like, you know, like if you, if you are, if you are hungry all day and then you kind of break your fast 15 minutes early, that day doesn't count. So therefore they want to make sure like, yeah, let's, let's make sure we don't, um, we don't miss the day so we can stay hungry extra 15 minutes. And then from that we are, uh, pu we are, we can put together. Okay, I think I think I am pronouncing as a feasting, but I should be pronouncing as feasting. Like for me, they sound exactly the same, but um, so it is F E A S T I N G. That it's supposed to be um, when I say feasting. That's what I mean. The second word on the screen. Anyway, so thank you for um, clarification of that. It's always good to learn new things. Um, <laughs> um, so it, it is amazing what people put up on the chat. It's full distraction, <laughs> full distraction. Um, okay. Um, we were with the messenger of Allah on the journey and he was observing some, he was observing fast. When the sun set, he said to a person, dismount and prepare the ground roasting barley drink for us. Upon this, he replied, O messenger of Allah, there is still daylight. There is daylight still. The messenger of Allah said, get down and prepare barley drink for us. He said, but it is still day daytime. Remember, like, Muhammad, you are the one who brought us the revelation. Um, like, according to you, we need to make sure sun goes down. And then it's dark now. Um, and then the person reminds, but it is still daytime. The messenger of Allah said to him, get down and prepare barley drink for me, for us. So he got down and prepared the barley liquid meal for him. The Prophet drank that and said to them, When you pursue the night approaching from that side, a person all observing fasting should break the fast. And he pointed towards east with his hand. So he couldn't wait. He couldn't wait. It to be proper time for the breaking the fast. And then he says three times, and guy says like, Come on, like, it's still daytime, it is still daytime. And then Muhammad says, nope, don't do those arguments for me. Go and go and prepare the meal for us. And then meal is uh, being prepared and then he drank it. He drank it. And then he responded, to, like, in case, like, anyone is going to comment and then going to say to him, oh, Muhammad, you couldn't hold yourself last, like, 15 minutes or something. You couldn't wait. And then they are going to kind of um, have a go on him. And then he, he responds with like very, very good response. When you see night is approaching from that side, a person fasting should break the fast. So when the night is coming from east, <laughs> you break the fast before it turns to be the right time. Him, he's supposed to be the perfect example. Gets these creepy revelations. Couldn't even wait like a little bit more time. So that he have a proper one day or proper miss one lunch. He couldn't even wait for that. And that is the man Muslims are trying to follow. And it's not only that, <laughs> it's not only that, like it is actually very serious in Muslim world. If you are drinking water on the street while people are fasting, you can get beaten. 
if you live in a Muslim majority country and if you don't want to fast, you pretend fasting. And if you are a woman and if you are going your monthly term, then you are not fasting. You are pretending to fast because you don't want people to see you as you are eating or drinking. But their freaking profit was quite okay to in front of everyone just order, even though it, it was still daytime. He ordered people to make a food for him and drink it. Very much amazing profit, isn't it? There is one rule for him. And then, actually, there is millions rule only for him. And then one rule for rest of the world. Rest of the Muslim world. Yeah, a couple of years ago, we put a video up where Muslim man was beaten on the street with the stick by by people because they noticed that um, he was drinking water. And then it's been recorded, like he got beaten with the stick on the street. And then a couple of years ago, again, we put it up on the blog or on, when we had a Facebook on Facebook, where in Malaysia, non-Muslims were eating their lunch, non-Muslim students were eating their lunch in the bathroom so that Muslims don't see they are having lunch. But see what their prophet does is, even a person is reminding him, hold on a minute, it's still daytime. It is still daytime, but still he goes and then it's zero self-control, zero self-control. Now, it makes sense to me why Muslim, do I have the picture? I don't have the proper picture, but it makes sense to me why Muslims get upset with the, this, such a pictures, because since Muhammad couldn't even like miss the proper meal, Probably he was a little bit fat, fatter than this picture. In the beginning, I used to think, oh, Muslims are getting upset because Muhammad doesn't have six packs in my pictures. But actually, no, they are getting upset because his tummy is not big enough. Because he couldn't hold himself for a little bit more to make sure that it is not daytime anymore so that they can break their fast. Not good, not good, not good. So that was, what was the reference for that? Let me put that on the screen again. And then when you meet with your Muslim friends, you can simply ask them where the, where the idea is, where the idea of not drinking water comes from. It's not my mugs are getting smaller. <laughs> it's not my mugs are getting smaller or smaller because I just, I had to change location. Um, and when I changed the location, I can't take all my things with me. What I had to do is I had to sacrifice certain things and sacrificing bigger mug was helpful thing because smaller mug takes small space. But hopefully very soon I shall be united with my stuff. And then you will see the big mug again. But I don't know what it is about you, about you that you think that big mug is nice. It's heavy, but it's very practical actually because like I don't have to um, stand up like lots of times to make a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. I can just like, I don't know, you can calculate 10 times drinking 10 or 20 of that is like more than, more than enough. Um, and for that, you you stand up only like 10 times and then you have to put the kettle on only 10 times. Hello. Hello. Uh, dear Cola, it seems that your mic is muted. Can you unmute yourself, please? Uh, hey, Sister Hatun. Hello. Uh, this is Omar, and uh, I've talked to you in the past. Peace of Christ be with you, brother. 
Yeah, how are you? How's your evening going? By, I, God, uh, by God's grace, I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Hey, man, I'm good. I'm good. I'm heading home, but I just want to share something really quick. Uh, and you, you talked about uh, in predominantly Muslim countries, um, especially in the month of Ramadan, uh, uh, people who are not maybe not Christians or they don't fast, so they get arrested. They get arrested. I just want. I came across that one YouTube uh, video one time. A crying baby Muslim was like, you know, the Western world doesn't accommodate my prayer time. The Western world, they live in Europe or uh, uh, the U.S. and they don't accommodate my prayer time. Uh, it, 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 there's so much hypocrisy and double standards in predominantly Muslim countries. Uh, why would a non-Muslim uh, woman want to wear a hijab in Iran? And why is it as non-Muslims we're not allowed in Mecca? Not that I, I care about visiting Mecca, but it's just too much double standard. They expect so much of the Western world and they don't even accommodate and respect uh, non-Christians in their own world. It's just uh, mind blowing. It's just mind blowing that double standard, that hypocrisy, that crookedness of Islam and many Muslims, especially when they live in, in Western world, in Europe or US. They have so much double standard. So that would be the thing I wanted to share with you, whatever you were saying. It's just so crooked and so much of a double standard. And I have a question I heard, and I, maybe you, uh, you, you know more about that. I don't know, because uh, in Islam, it's all about sex. It's all about polygamy. So could you please share one thing about uh, Moses, the Muslim Moses? I came across one time, if you can elaborate on that, the Muslim Moses and the red stone. I, I don't know. I heard I heard some stories one time on the Muslim Moses and the the black stone, the black stone. So could you please just pull up some uh, sort of I don't know if you have some knowledge on this. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, brother. I will respond that um, um, after you hang up, since you are yeah, driving, yeah. it's not it's not very wise and safe. To, uh, to speak on the phone while you are on the car. That's not very wise. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I apologize. But uh, this is pretty much what I wanted to say, okay. is the double standard that uh, that Muslims operate live by, the double standard that they set and they don't really respect uh, the Constitution. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you so much for taking my call and God bless you. Thank, thank you very much for calling him, brother. Thanks. So that was um, Umar from the state. We did have a couple of chats with him in the past. So he's talking about he's talking about um, why there is a double standard uh, when non-Muslims are in Muslim majority countries. Sometimes they have to wear burqa. For example, when I was in Saudi Arabia, I needed to wear burqa. Uh, um, when people travel to Iran, you have to wear burqa. Um, I would say in Saudi Arabia, wearing burqa is much safer. I think I was to, I was telling that to um, Brother Tony Costa yesterday. I think Saudi Arabia is much safer versus Canada. Um, there is it seems there is more there is more freedom in Saudi towards Christians than Canada. Of course not in I'm not saying that with full meaning but full meaning but yeah and on Sunday last Sunday at speakers corner we were um, talking with a Muslim um, gentleman he expressed that um, he's in Britain because in Britain it is much um, easier um, and Britain is one of the best countries where Muslims can practice their religion so he didn't go to Saudi Arabia he didn't go to Pakistan or Indonesia, Malaysia, but he decided to come to England because in Eng England is one of the best countries where you do practice Islam. So that's kind of it's, um, itself says all of it. And um, regarding the question on Moses and the stone, let me actually pull that up. I'm not sure about uh, Moses and the black stone. 
but let me put together uh, Moses and stones which are running uh, Muslim Moses is actually been seen by naked seen naked by by other individuals which is not very nice but let's put it up on the screen can I just get a confirmation that you can see the screen it's always tricky if my Skype is on that my screen can be seen or not can be seen it's difficult to guess from my side but um, so had it had it states that um, Actually, let's look at this one. Amongst the traditions narrated from Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah, on the authority of blah, 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 okay, the one that Bani Israel used to take bath naked, and they looked at, they looked at the private parts of one another. Moses, however, took a bath alone in private, and they said, by Allah, nothing forbids Moses to take bath along with us. Here, Moses once went for bath and placed his clothes on a stone, and stone moved on with his clothes. Moses ran after it, saying, O oh stone, my clothes, O oh stone, my clothes. And Bani Israel had a chance to see Moses' private, private parts of Moses, and then said, By Allah, Moses does not um, suffer from any ailment. The stone then stopped, and Moses had, had been seen by them, and he then took hold of his clothes and struck the stone. By Allah, there are the marks of six or seven strokes made by Moses on the stone. So, it was general practice for Israelites, according to the Muslims, uh, to have bath together and they would check one another but Moses, Muslim Moses would not have bath with them and then they would just like okay, there might be something creepy with this guy why he's not taking bath with us and then the stone steps in as, Muhammad, as Moses gets into bath a stone steps in where Moses puts his clothes on and run away with the clothes of Moses that's not enough. Moses tried to speak with the stone and then kind of, okay, stone, you are like, I know you are running away from me right now, but on you, there are some clothes. I can see they are not your clothes. They are my clothes. I am the one who is naked, yet you are the one who is running with my clothes. I want them back. And then after everyone sees Moses naked, then stone stops and Moses gets back his, his clothes. And then, of course, since Muslim Moses was very much angry at that stage, he gives, um, he beats the stones, and stones gets marks of the stroke, marks of the strike. That's one of the uh, story regarding the stone. Um, should be fun. This is all fun. <laughs> Um, I think I hope that kind of gives idea to him regarding the regarding the question um, Umar was asking. Um, there was a question on my mug in the conversation of the mug. My my big mug was the mug for coffee. Yeah, sister, you are correct. Mohammed even himself had as he was feasting. Even he himself had double standards for his for his um, Ramadan time. That's just like not good at all, not good at all. So I'm just gonna go down to make sure I am up to up to speed with the comments.
two people are calling at the same time right now. Hello. Who is it? Yeah, Hello. How to? You hear me? Hello, sir. Who are you? Yeah. Okay. So I just want to touch on something really quickly. Okay. So, so, sir, what's your yeah, name? Yeah. yeah, my name is not important. It's okay. Yeah. Sorry, what's so your like name? To... Okay, my name is uh, Omar. My name is Omar. Omar, okay. Can you speak a little bit close to the mic? Yeah, I'll speak close to the mic. I got you. Can you hear me? Your sound is not as clear as, as it's supposed to be, but... Um, so, are you Muslim? Are you Christian? I'm a... Uh, I'm a uh, deist. I'm a deist. What does that mean? It's like... It's difficult to explain. Basically... I believe in I believe in God and I believe in I like I believe in Prophet Muhammad I believe in Jesus I believe in like all the prophets but what I see from so you, you are, guys so you are you are Muslim how can I help you sir? yeah basically okay yeah so do you believe the Bible is a, God, a God's word like a hundred percent God's word why are you asking that I'm just asking a question do you believe the Bible is God's I, word? I believe Bible is the inspired word of God okay so can the Bible have errors so um I'm not gonna do yes and no questions make your case. Bring up your questions and then we discuss. Okay, okay, no problem. Can you turn to, let's see, yeah, can you turn to 2 Samuel 6.23? 2 Samuel? 6.23. 6.20. 6.23. Yep. No, just read it first. No, no, read so, it. so, excuse me, sir. You join into the live stream. Okay, it's okay. You join. Yeah, we're gonna the, read it. Yeah. Excuse so me. Need, excuse me. Sir, sir, so sorry. Sir, pull yourself together and can you listen, please? So you called into the live stream. Let me give you. I must. Have you called me before? No, I've never. No. Before. So you never called me before. Let me give you some principles for this conversation to move forward. So you need to tell me why you are calling, and then you need to bring up your objections, and then we discuss your objections. No problem. So, Therefore, uh, please bring up your objections and then tell me what is what is it your problem. Okay, you, okay. My objection. This is my main objection. Is that okay? You believe the Bible is the word of God, but the Bible has a very clear contradiction. Very clear contradiction. So I want you to explain to me how God can make mistakes. I don't know if God, because uh, your your Bible has mathematical errors or historical errors, but we're going to deal with some of the mathematical errors of the Bible today. Okay. So, actually, before I go to that one, I think I'll go to this one. So, could you turn to actually, I'm sorry, I'm not going to... Sir, sir, pull yourself together. You don't need to be excited. Any, everything is fine. It's like all I'm seeing is your wall. If yeah, you want yeah, to show yeah, your yeah, face, yeah. No problem, if you no want problem. to show your face, please change the direction of your camera. It might be much better. Changing the it's direction okay. of the camera is turning okay. off the camera. So, you yeah, have a problem... Enough. You have a problem with the contradictions in the Bible, so-called yep. contradictions. And the reference you gave me is 2 Samuel, chapter 6, verse 23. Please continue no, no, with that. that. What not is that your one. point on that? Not that one. I'm not that. I've made the wrong reference. 2 Kings so there is no, Sorry, there is no contradiction in 2 Samuel. You lied. No, I didn't lie. I just got the reference wrong. You got the, you to, you got the reference yeah. wrong. What is your yeah, next reference? reference 2 Kings 8.26. If you could turn to it. So two kings? 826. 826. And yes. you believe if there is contradictions in the Bible, Bible cannot be the word of God, correct? Yes, I believe anything that claims to be the word of God cannot have contradictions. Okay. So that is, and where did you get that criteria? That criteria I got from logic and reason and rationality, epistemological rationality. If God reveals a book, you don't expect him to contradict himself because God is perfect. Okay, if there is a contradiction in the book, according to your criteria, that book cannot be from God. So, good. Yeah, thank, so thank, gonna, you, thank yeah. you very much for confirming for that for us, but we will kind of look at that, um, how can Quran be the word of God. Can you please point out, me, point out to me from your book where it says, Bible cannot be the word of God because there are the contradictions in it. Oh, the Bible cannot be the word of God because it has contradictions in it? Yeah. Is that your, so, okay. So you're saying that if the Bible has contradictions... No, no, that, that's not what I'm saying. Listen. Okay. Listen. You are Muslim, okay? And you are telling Bible cannot be the word of God because there are contradictions in it. 
I am asking if you think Bible cannot be the word of God, there are contradictions in it. I am sure Allah did tell you that in somewhere in the Quran yeah, yeah. or Muhammad yeah, told you that in the Quran. Yeah, Can you please be kind and then provide the Quranic reference for me where yeah. Allah states that Bible cannot be the word of God because there are contradictions in it. Okay, I'll pause you to the verse, no problem. Okay, first thing before I give you the verse. If the Quran doesn't mention the Bible explicitly, but it mentions just a book, that if a book is from God, then it cannot have contradictions. Is that enough for you? Or do you need the Bible to be explicitly mentioned? I, I, I need you to provide the Quranic verse for me. Gives you the criteria that yes. Bible is not the word of God because there are contradictions in it. Okay, turn to word, to, turn to Surah Nisa, verse four. Surah. Uh, I mean, Surah, Surah, Nisa. Surah four, verse four. No, Surah four, eighty-two. My bad. Sorry, Surah four, verse eighty-two. Can you read it for me, please? Okay. It says. They do they not reflect upon the Quran? If it had been from any other than God, there would have been contradictions in it. Now, the Quran is basically saying that if a book claims to be from God, there cannot be contradictions in it. No, so, the, ver the verse. Yes, no, 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 sir. Yes, the, verse, the verse. The verse you said. read. The verse yes. you read, Surah four, verse eighty-two. Sorry, I need to repeat some of the things you are saying because your sound is not as clear as it's supposed to be. So, Surah four, verse eighty-two. Okay, states that according to you, if there are contradictions in the book, that book cannot be from God. Correct? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to read Surah 4 verse 82 for everyone. I'm reading from Sahih International Translation. If you are not happy with that, please do verbalize. No, I'm okay. okay. Then do they not reflect upon the Quran? If it had been from other than Allah they would have found within much contradiction. Exactly. So it is talking about the Quran. If yes. Quran is not from the Allah, besides someone other than Allah, there will yes. be much contradictions. Yes. It doesn't yes. tell okay. you what, what is that much contradictions, how many think identified as the much contradictions, but it is talking about the Quran. It doesn't talking about the Bible. So do you have the Quranic verse? tells you that Bible cannot be the word of God because there are contradictions in it. Okay, so you said that it's talking about the Quran. I agree, it is talking about the Quran. And I knew you would already make this argument that it's in reference to the Quran, it's not reference to any other okay. book. Um, so, so the, yes, the verse Omar, says, Omar, if it had, yes. Sorry, can you speak a little bit slower for me? Okay, no problem. Okay, so, okay. we'll start yeah. from the beginning. Yeah, again, as I said, the Quran says that if it had been from any other than God. So it's saying that the Quran, specifically the Quran, because it doesn't have contradictions or that, that means that it's from God. So indirectly, you, you, you understand what explicit and implicit evidence is, right? Can you hear me? Do you understand what explicit and implicit evidence would be? So, yeah? when it, it says, explicitly, let, it let me ask you the basic questions the way I can understand. When it says much contradictions, how many contradictions uh -huh. would be much? Five or one or three? Just contradictions in general. Like, if I show you two contradictions, okay, would, would you identify that as much? No, I would say over, okay, you want me to actually set a standard, like a, a number, a numerical number. Because we're playing around with semantics right now. I want to go to the Bible to show you the contradictions no, in it and I, how you can reconcile so, it. No, no, before before move to the Bible, yes. you are Muslim, uh -huh. I'm Christian, I am accountable for my scripture. My scripture okay. is my authority, it crushes everything, okay? And that's yes. supposed to be the same for you. So therefore, if you are making a claim about my book, it's supposed to be telling you from your book, because my reading of the Quran, all I am seeing is Allah, Muhammad and Quran is fall in love with the Christian scripture. They don't say there are contradictions in the Christian scripture, therefore it is not the word of God. So now am I right to assume that am I right to assume that sorry there is funny background noises coming from your side so am I right to assume that you don't have a verse in the Quran tells you 
Bible cannot be the word of God because there are contradictions in it. Is that correct? No. Again, I, I, I'm, I was about to explain myself that there's a difference between explicit evidence and implicit evidence. By the Quran saying that if it, meaning the Quran, had been from any other than Allah, there would have been contradictions in it. Basically, what the Quran is saying is that if a book is from other than God, there would be much contradictions in it. It doesn't have to explicitly say the Bible for that to be clearly implied. No, here. in here, so in case, here yes. it doesn't say the book, it does say the Quran. Yes, you, 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 so you want me to repeat myself. It does say the Quran, it doesn't say you want the me to book, myself. it does say the Quran, and then it also uses the much, okay? Therefore, my question was to you, this is simply... This is simply written for Quran. How many, how many variations, or sorry, how many contradictions would I would be identified as much? Okay, again, I'll go. I'll go to that point. I'm mean, your first point was that it's only for the Quran, which again I say is not true, because it's yeah, making a that's case what for. The Quran yeah, I'll, says. I'll go to your point. It's okay. I'll go to your point. If it, meaning the Quran, had been from any other than God, there would have been contradictions. Anyone logically can imply here that is saying. If a book is from claiming to be from God, and that if it has contradictions in it, then it cannot be from God, which is where the case for the Quran is giving for itself. The second point you made about much contradictions, in terms of just it's implicitly implying that there will be more. I would say maybe I, I can't give you a number really to be honest. I'll say more than three, more than four, meaning that there will just be many contradictions in it. So you know, more than three, more than three would be identified as many. Okay, I'll, I'll, so I'll, more than I'll three meets that. with your criteria, and it no is problem. for the Quran. Um, I did express, if you speak a little bit louder for me, sorry, I didn't express that, but if you speak a little bit louder, that would be helpful. And then also, can you speak a little bit slower? Louder and slower. Okay, no problem. Yeah. So, we are, okay. so you are telling me three is much contradiction. And since Allah, Quran is identified according to you as the word of Allah, are you Sunni Muslim or Shia Muslim? I am a, a Sunni Muslim. You are Sunni Muslim. So Quran, according to you, is the eternal word of Allah, if you are Sunni Muslim. And in this word, uh, this book, as Allah communicates, Allah verbalizes it as this is for the Quran. Okay? So, therefore, now we kind of conclude that there is no verse in the Quran tells you Bible cannot be the word of God because there are contradictions. So that's for the Quran. Yeah, again, that, I said, in that case, in that case, let, 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 let me finish. Not, let, can, can, you, can you let me finish, please? Thank you. Okay, no so in that case, and then number is the three. Um, so let me give you three contradictions and then we will see that Quran cannot be the word of Allah and then we move on to the Bible. Okay. So, uh, who is the first Muslim, according to Quran? Surah okay. 6, uh, verse 14, tells us Muhammad is the first Muslim. Moses, Surah 7, verse 142 or 143, it is Moses is the first Muslim. Or Abraham is the first Muslim, Surah 2. Or Adam is the first Muslim, again, Surah 2, 3. 6 or 37 okay who is the first muslim according to quran if there is no contradiction that's my number one contradiction number okay, number answer. two contradiction right should muslims accept peace or fight with one another or not accept it okay that's number two fighting and then number three um number three contradiction is uh, let me think, let me think, let can me think, let to, me can think. I respond to the other two? I can respond. Because um, I'm waiting for you to get your, your third one. Once you get your third one, I'll respond to all of them. Yeah, I'm, I'm just thinking of giving you the third one because I can't... Um, okay, third one is the ma story of in the story of Mary. Um, in the story of Mary, okay, how many angels were talking to the Mary according to Surah 19 and according to Surah 3, okay? No problem, no problem. So there are, the, uh, here's the three, uh, contradictions. three contradictions according okay. to Quran. So okay. would you agree with me that actually Allah cannot be, 
the word of uh, Quran cannot be the word of God because there are contradictions which fulfills the criteria of Surah 4 verse 82. No, I wouldn't because I'm going to explain how they're not contradictions. If you would give me that time to explain. Is that okay? Sure. Go ahead, sir. Okay. So the first contention you make or postulation, you pontificated that because it says that various people among very different uh, parts in history were the first Muslims, therefore the Quran is contradicting itself. Well, when you look at the context of each of those verses, for example, in Surah Satir, uh, Allah SWT, he references the two magicians of Pharaoh. And he says that they were the first Muslims from among their people, you see. So, in terms of the first Muslim, it's only in reference to the context of their people. So, for example, Muhammad SAW was the first Muslim from among his people. Moses was the first Muslim from among his people. And all these people are the first Muslims from among their people. The context is very clear, and that's a rational and logical explanation. The second contention you made is in Surah Al-Hujurat, where Allah SWT says, make peace between your brothers, you see. And then it says that you should fight them. Okay. It says that you should make peace between your brothers, but, you see, you have the rule of exception. Philosophically, that's not a contradiction. If you have a general idea and then you have an exception for that idea, it's not a contradiction. So you should generally make peace between your brothers. And if they fight, then you should fight the other one who's oppressing so you can make peace between them. So you're still making peace, but you're doing it in a different way. The third one you made is in uh, the ch chapter three of the Quran. It's referring to two different uh, what's it called? Two different events. The first event is actually uh, Gabriel blowing into Mary Jesus, and the second is just Mary who in her chamber praying. So it's not even referring to the same event. So none of these are contradictions. Continue. Okay. Sir, we go to the Bible now. Sir, I need you to speak up for me because people are expressing that um, they are finding it difficult to hear you. Okay. Please make sure you are aware of that and you speak up for it. So okay. let, let me respond to that. Um, I'm sorry that as a Sunni Muslim, especially during the Ramadan, you are expressing to me that Allah was one of the best. Allah was one of the worst communicator ever. When Allah expressed, it is actually Moses. It doesn't say among his people, among um Israelites, it, for Adam, for Abraham, and for Muhammad. It doesn't say among those people. I'm sorry that Allah is worst of communicator. That simply screams out there is contradiction regard in the Quran. Who was the first Muslim? Okay, please, please, like read the verses um, as it is instead of like oh, editing, 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 editing to the verse. That's not helpful to anyone, especially during the Ramadan since probably you are trying to get to Islamic paradise. Regarding the, regarding the second point, there is a very much difference between um, um, people to fight and not fight, people to receive peace or not. I'm sorry that Allah contradicts one another, but you do have verses in the Quran clearly contradicts one another. There is no compulsion in religion, yet you kill those who... Um, who do not accept um, Islam. Um, regarding the third point, I am afraid to tell you that you did not read the verses. Um, my question was very, very simple. How many angels came and spoke to Mary? Surah 3, 42 to 45 gives me um, angels in a plural sense. And then also Surah 19 tells me there is only one. So... I think those are simply screams out as a contradiction. Unless you are going to tell us that, sadly, Allah did not, um, Allah was not very good communicator. Okay. So again, the first point you made about, it doesn't say among you. I never said the text mentions, it says among you. I'm saying that the context is clear because if we, we have to be charitable in these kinds of situations. So what you have to do is you have to try your best to give the best logical rational explanation. Okay, so, so Quran is clear. not logic. Quran is not logical. Therefore, you need to use logic to explain it in its best form. I thought Quran that is. I, I thought Quran is well detailed, well explained. You don't need to put your own logic in it. Allah already put His logic, but you are telling me no. You need to use your logic to make sense of those things. Uh, no, actually, the Quran says to use your intellect and to think upon the Quran. So no, Quran is also saying this is well detailed, well explained yes. book in everything. Now you exactly. are you are saying actually no, it is not well detailed, well explained. Therefore, I am using my. So people are people are complaining regarding the, your sound quality. Um, 
therefore you are um, adding your logic in it so am i right to again assume no, and verbalize that allah failed in the logic and you are as a muslim fulfilling the gaps where allah fails no actually not okay i need because, you to sir yeah i need you to speak louder okay okay can you hear me um like people are complaining the quality of your voice is not loud enough all right can you hear me um can, okay do sound check speak for um just over 20 seconds without break and okay, speak yes. louder could you hear me i'm asking could you hear me no so it has been expressed that it is hard to hear you sir are you like is the mic close to your face yeah it is are you sure you can hear me it's not me people are in the chat expressing they want you to speak louder okay i'll try i'll try to speak louder i'll try can you hear me though i'm asking his mic is deaf <laughs> so, um um, yeah, con continue, sir. Speak slow and louder. That should make it easier. Okay. Again, as I said, the Quran gives you ways in which to understand it. So the Quran does explain. It explains also how you should understand the Quran. So the Quran tells you to use your intellect, and it also tells you to ponder and think upon the verses of the Quran. So it allows you and permits you to use your logic to help you and understand the verses of the Quran. So using your logic and rationality is not... Uh, invalidated by the Quran, it's validated by the Quran. But Quran okay. says it, it is well detailed, well explained, and you are adding your own logic to make sense of the Quran. No, I'm not, because the Quran tells you how to understand it. If I give you a manual and I tell you this is how you should read this manual, you should read from here to here, or you should read it in a certain way, which is what the Quran is doing, it's telling you how to understand it by using your intellect, and I can give you the verses for that if you want that. Okay, again, yes, I will. So, I would want that. Huh? I would want that, but um, okay. so res respond to the, my objections. Speak slower and louder. That should help. Yeah. Okay. Again. So, again, as I said, the Quran tells you to think upon the verses, and it tells you to use your intellect and to use your reason to help you to understand the Quran and to help you to understand the world around you in general. So it is validated that you can but, use. What is the reference for that? that? Okay, I'll give it to you. Um, are you are you eating right now? That might affect the sound quality. No, I'm not eating right now. Okay, because people are now start guessing why your sound is not very good. They are thinking probably it's iftar. Uh -huh, okay. So if you go to verses two two forty two, if you can go to it. Two two hundred forty two. That's the first one. I can give you more. Does Allah make clear to you his verses that you might use reason? Okay. So do you understand and what, that? What are you going to do with the verse which says there is no... Con it is well detailed, well explained. Surah 6, Surah 12. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole point. It explains whole itself point of by telling you how to explain yeah. it or how to understand it. It, it. It's telling you how to understand the Quran. It literally says so clearly in that verse that he explains you to the verses so that you could use your reason. So using your reason is not invalidated, again, as I said. So I would like to focus on the topic that the subject is a contradiction, right? So we should focus on that. So I gave you I gave you three contradictions of the Quran. Yes, yes. And all, all you've done is simply edit your own logic to make sense of the word of Allah. No. Again, as I said, I showed That's you the verse there done. where you... Yeah, uh, can I... I'll respond. Okay. Again, I gave you the verse showing that using your reason is validated in the Quran. So that's very clear. Okay. So then, as I said, the first Muslim one, that's your first contention, is the first Muslim one. It's obviously referring to the first Muslims among their people, which is obvious. Muhammad no, no, where, the first... where does it say among the people? It doesn't have to say that for that to be clear. Does it? It's like me asking you, where did Jesus say, I am God, worship me? You always have this contention. He doesn't say that, but you say that the concept is there, and that is clear. It's the same thing here. The concept is very clear. The prophets are no, always it, the first. No, it is not very clear. Therefore, I am asking, who is the first Muslim? It is, so like, 
Moses, uh, what what is the what is the t- people group of Abraham, and what is the people group of Moses? Okay, so the people of Moses at that specific time would be his people of the what's it called of the what's it called of the children of uh, not of the children of Israel of the what's it called the people of Pharaoh at that time. Because we know people, that he people of the, the house of so, so, sorry, um, I, I need you to speak louder and slower. People of the Moses, who are those yes. people? Well, we have the Israelites, obviously. But we're, what's it called? His people in our paradigm, obviously. I think in your paradigm as well. His people would be the Israelites because that's where he was born. Okay, pe- people of also, the Moses are also, the Israelites. Yeah, I'm not finished. I'm not finished. I'm not finished. It will be the Israelites. And it would also be the people of Pharaoh as well, because that's where he grew up. He grew up as among the people of Pharaoh. Okay. So those he, are still his people as well. Sorry, the reason, only reason I'm cutting in is because your sound is not very clear. I'm making sure people are understanding what you are saying. That's the only reason, okay? So okay. people of the Moses are the Pharaohs and, and also Israelites, according to you. Yes. Okay, so why then? Uh, who are the, who are the pharaoh? They are the Egyptians. Not really. The Egyptians, really Nubians. It will be the people of Pharaoh at that time. Okay, but say. who who are the people of Pharaoh? They are Egyptians. You could say the Egyptians at that time, if you want to say. Egyptians. That. Okay. So Moses. Okay. Surah seven verse one hundred forty three expressed that Moses is the first Muslim, and that if the pharaoh is people again, the people group of Moses, then Surah 26, verse 51, identifies them as the first Muslim. Okay, so they are the same people group according to you. Who are the people group of Abraham? The people group of who? Abraham? Abraham, yeah. Mesopotamian, uh, what's it called? Because he lived in Mesopotamia, I think, so that will most Sorry, where, where, did get mo- uh, where did he get the information Abraham lived in Mesopotamia? Uh, I think historically, that's Earth? accurate. I think that's the most accurate, but there are other theories as to where uh, he lived at that time. So according to, you mean according to history? Or Babylon, yeah. Uh, he, he's from the city of Ur, according to the British Museum and according to the Bible. Yeah. He's definitely so you are agreeing with the Bible and British Museum that Abraham is from the city of Ur? Uh, Mo- yeah. Um, Previously, also known as a Mesopotamia. So, yeah. what was the his people group of Abraham? Yeah. Yeah. So Mesopotamians, uh, just those people that lived in his vicinity. So that would be like the Mesopotamians or the Babylonians. Mesopotamians and Babylonians. I thought Abraham went to Mecca and then built the Kaaba there. Uh, yeah. He, after he left his people, he went to Mecca and built the Kaaba with Ismail. Okay, wh- when did that happen? So when he went to Kaaba to build, build, when he went to Mecca to build the Kaaba according to Islam. So Abraham was identified at that stage as a first Muslim. Yes. Okay. So enter the uh, Saudi Arabia, and then you've got Moses, who is also for Israelites as well as for Egyptians. Is also also um, is identified as the first Muslim. Okay, so if according to you, if um, the, these verses are expressing to you that they are the first Muslims to the their people, how come Moses and then Israelites, um, Moses and Egypt, um, Egyptians are identified as the first Muslims? Moses and Egyptians, or just Moses himself? Moses and the Egyptians, some Egyptians. I gave you the reference, Surah 56, 21, Surah 7, 143. Okay, I'll go to 56, 21, because... And then I will, I will be asking the same question for Adam. If Adam is the first Muslim, who, are, who, are, who is the people group of Adam came? Because um, I will be asking the same question for... Um, Abraham. Okay, you said fifty-six twenty-one says that the Egyptians are the first. Fifty-six fifty-one. Oh, sorry, twenty-six fifty-one. Oh. Check it. I might be wrong. Let me just check it. Um, I think fifty-six, twenty-six fifty-one. Yeah. 
Okay. So, so far what I am hearing is, you are telling me that those people, if like that it's, I gave you the three contradictions. So now we are breaking down the first contradiction. You are telling me, no, Muhammad was the first Muslim among his people. His people would be Arabs, according uh -huh. to you. Moses is, the first, Moses is the first Muslim among Egyptians and Israelites. Some Egyptians are the first Muslims among Egyptians. Abraham is the first Muslim among Mesopotamian people who also went to Saudi Arabia. And then Adam, I haven't heard it yet. Okay. So your argument is that I said that Moses was the first from among the Egyptians and also the Israelites, right? I'm just trying to break it down to understand who was. Yeah, okay. Like I, I gave you Moses, Abraham, Muhammad, Adam, uh, and Egyptians. I gave you five, five, one, five people, and then I am asking which five of those are the first Muslim. They are all the first Muslim. They're the, oh yeah, they're all the first Muslims. They are from all the their... first Muslims. So um, from I'm, among their people, yes. My Eng my English is not very good, but if something is the first, then we wouldn't have five. So one of them would be the first. Next one would be the second. Next one would be the third. Next one would be the fourth. And then following one will be the fifth. So which one, which one, which five of those are the first Muslim? Yeah, you would actually have to look at the context of what that person is saying. You understand? If they're just saying this, I'm looking, first, I'm looking you at, look at the context of what they're saying. It in. So it's very clear that Moses was the first from among his people. Likewise, Abraham was the first from but among his people. But you said Moses' people are also the Egyptians and so the Israelites some, as well. And Israelites, okay? So, was the Moses or the some Egyptians were the first Muslims? I said that from among the Israelites and the Egyptians, he was the first Muslim. Not just the Egyptians. Okay, I'm just looking at the Egyptian part, okay? There needs to be only one of them needs to be first. Was the Moses the first, 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 first Muslim? the Egyptians and the Israelites. Sorry, repeat it for me again? Okay. I don't think, uh, yeah, I don't think I understand. Okay. So the, what's called? Let me try to rephrase the argument. I don't want to rephrase the argument. I'm yeah. just trying to understand. Yeah, that is, that is understand. already sound quality is not very good. I'm just trying to my, yeah. trying my best to understand. So you've got Moses, understand. and then you've got some Egyptians. Okay, which one yeah. is the first Muslim? Okay, again, I said I said his people are the Egyptians and the Israelites. Okay, so the, for, then the, his yeah, people are Egyptians. When his peoples are Egyptians, is the Moses first Egyptian Muslim, or some Egyptians are the first Egyptian Muslims? Again, I'm trying to. Yeah, you have to give me a little bit of time. I said again, I'm trying to help you understand. He, his people were the Egyptians and the Israelites. What do I mean by that? I mean that his people that lived in Egypt at the time were also the Israelites. So among those people, he was the first Muslim. That's what I meant. I didn't mean like the Egyptians. And then obviously the ones like the magicians in the court of Pharaoh are the actual non non Israelite Egyptians that are the first Muslim. That's what I was trying to say. That's why okay, I said, that doesn't make sense to me again. Therefore, I am asking my question again. Which one is the really really first Muslim? And okay, I will be asking the same question, same with Adam and Abraham, because verse none of those verses says among his people. It doesn't have to say that though, right? You can it, use it your logic say, and rationality as I showed. It, it, like, it, it is just heartbreaking that Allah failed very basic when it comes to his communication, which yes. is supposed to be in the it, Quran. It, it's also Allah, very, very, Allah, very deep. Allah yeah, yeah. fails. Allah fails with very basic logic to put it there that among his people. That's not there, but I'm just giving that to you because I'm just um, struggling to hear your voice clearly so i don't want to kind of have any debate on that topic so which which one are the first muslim okay again okay. first of all about your remark about allah fails to communicate just like your jesus fails to communicate i am god worship me he had so many times to say that he didn't say that that's just one point. Second point yes the first muslim like the actual first first muslim would have been adam since he was the first human being and then all the other people sort of referenced as the first muslim are just from among their people. That's very clear with the context. 
it doesn't have to mention that explicitly for you to be able to use your logic and rationality to come to that conclusion. And I gave you a verse in the Quran saying you could use your logic and rationality to understand the Quran. Okay. So, so that's it, it. Still, it doesn't make sense to me. Okay. So you told me Surah 4 verse 82 tells you if Quran is some, beside Allah being someone like from someone else, there should be much contradiction. And your criteria for much contradiction was three. Okay. If I gave you one, you would be asking two more. I gave you three criteria, three contradictions. I'm still struggling to understand. Adam is identified as the first Muslim. Abraham is identified as the first Muslim. Egyptians are some Egyptians are identified as the first Muslims. Moses is identified as the first Muslim. Muhammad is identified as the first Muslim. Five options. Which one is really first Muslim? The okay, first. No which one is really first Muslim? Okay. And I'm trying to break it down when you express that Moses came. Moses came for the people group in his time. He was for Israelites as well as for Egyptians. You are. Yeah. Then my okay. question is again: Which, if Moses is for Israelites and for Egyptians, then why there is needs again? Moses is identified, or the Egyptians are identified as the first Muslim because that there can only be one first. Like okay. it doesn't say joined first. Like sometimes you go to the um, watch the I don't know marathon or something. If people are very good, then it will be like joined first. Or if you go to the competitions, you get to see there will be joined first. But okay. in here, it doesn't use the join first, even though you put your interpretation into the verse, um, which is supposed to be well detailed, well explained. Um, you put your own tafsir into it. Still, that doesn't make that much sense. But I'm just trying to still understand which would be the first Muslim. Okay. Okay. So your first argument was okay. If you're talking about historically, obviously, speak, since Adam speak was loud first, of loud yeah. of please. Okay. Okay. If you're speaking historically, obviously Adam would be the first. I am Muslim. not. I'm yeah. not speaking history. Yeah. I'm trying, I'm trying I, to I, I want you to give it to me from the Quran. Allah himself tells you because it is Allah himself says there is no contradiction in this book there shouldn't be much contradiction in book while Allah doesn't give you the number yeah. you, you pick you the number three therefore I am you, asking if you stop interrupting I'll tell you it's fine okay again I'm saying that since Adam was the first human being and he was a Muslim then he was the first Muslim that's already done in terms of just historically now, in terms of the other people referenced as the first Muslim, that's from among their people. You understand? Because I don't understand. Part, yes. It's clear that if they are from the first Muslims from among their people. Though. No, but I, 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 that is clear to you because you are claiming to be Muslim and you are trying to uh, fulfill Surah 482. But it is not clear to me because my simple question was to you. And that simple question is even though you edited your own tafsir, it is still not answered my question. If, even for the sake of the argument, if you go with the history that Adam is the first man, therefore he is the first Muslim, why does Allah in the first place identify, oh, Muhammad is the first Muslim, or um, Moses is the first Muslim? There was only one first Muslim. Where did non-Muslims came from? Allah already planned to not have Muslims at the first place. But all I am focusing right now is, if Moses is the first Muslim to Egyptians and to Israelites, why you have some Israelites who are also identified as the first Muslim? Okay, again, as I said. Don't, so what's can you please uh, yeah, not I'm, repeat the same thing? Because the same thing doesn't answer my question. Can you please come up with a different answer? I don't need to come up with a different answer if the answer I'm propositing makes sense. Again. I'm trying to explain to you. I think you just don't want to understand, maybe, because I keep on explaining this to you. The Quran says you can use your intellect and rationality to understand the Quran. And I get yeah, that. Therefore, I am asking the questions. Yes, exactly. I didn't, even, exactly. I didn't even ask you the question what is your historical evidence? Those, like Egyptians, those some Egyptians and, um, sorry, Islamic um, reference, some Egyptians and Moses is in the same time, they lived in the same time. I didn't even 
ask you to back up your claims. How do you know? Uh, when did Moses live? When did Abraham live? I didn't even like went through those things. All I am just trying to get to the basics. Yeah, exactly. I'm trying to explain that to you again. Those are just the first Muslims from among their people. Why? Because it doesn't Moses say was the first that. One to, yes, it, of course it doesn't say that. Just like the Bible doesn't say, I, Jesus says, I am God, worship me. Or the Bible never explicitly mentions the Trinity, but you believe in it because of the concept. You believe the concept is in there. I'm saying the same thing with this, that Moses, since he's the first person to receive revelation among those people, then obviously he's going to be the first Muslim because he's the first one to believe. It's the same thing with Prophet Muhammad. He's the first one to receive revelation among his people. So he's obviously going to be the first one to be a Muslim. The same follows for Abraham. He's the first one to receive revelation from among those people. So using your rationality, which the Quran says you can, you can easily come to that conclusion. Now I want to focus on the Israelites and the Egyptians. I said his people are the Egyptians and the Israelites, meaning that the Israelites were in Egypt at that time. So among those people, Moses was the first Muslim. Those Egyptians that said they were the first Muslims were just pure Egyptians, not non-Israelite Egyptians. Again, it's, it's very simple. If they're the first to receive that revelation from among their people, then they're the first Muslims because they're the first ones to believe. That's the whole idea. Just like it's the same thing with the Bible. You guys believe in the sure. Trinity, but I don't think there's anything explicitly mentioning the Trinity when you say that the concept is there. It's the so, same thing. Thank you. First of all, thank you very much for um, being a Muslim and telling me that concept of the Trinity is in the scripture. And uh, also scripture itself confirms that Jesus is identified as God. We will talk about it when it comes. But my question was and is still the same. Who is the first Muslim? I gave you five names. And all I am hearing is the like same thing and same thing. You put your own tafsir in it to explain the well-detailed, well-explained word of Allah. Which I let you to do, I'm like because your sound quality is not very good, I'm letting that go. There is a time problem, but if the revelation is already being received by some Egyptians, okay? Why there are some Egyptians identified as first Muslim alongside of M Moses to be identified as the first Muslim? Okay, so you should do your question to Moses and the Egyptians. Okay, as I said, that when I said that his people are the Egyptians and the Israelites, I didn't say that properly. I meant to say that the Israelites were in Egypt at that time. So when I mean Egyptians and Israelites, that's what I mean. So I mean that among those people, the Israelites were in Egypt, Moses was the first Muslim. Now, the first first people to believe from among the Egyptians who are non-Israelites were those magicians. They were not Israelites, but they were the first people to believe. So the, Moses is the first Muslim from among those people, and he, those Egyptians are the first Muslims from among their people. Again, as I said, the context is very so what clear. Is the, what and is the date the, for and, and those I was Egyptians? To make one, more, one more point. What huh? is the date for those Egyptians, and what is the date for Moses? What does the date have to do with the contradictions? So I, 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 I want to figure out like when did they become a Muslim? They become a Muslim before Moses? Or did they become oh, a no, Muslim? They didn't. They, did, didn't. they, no. yeah, they become a Muslim at the same time with Moses? No, no, no. Because Moses, because uh, in Juz Amr of the Quran, it says, Hal ataka hadith Musa idna da'urabbuhu bil wadil muqaddasi tuwa, meaning that the first time that he received revelation was in the valley of Tuwa before he went to Egypt, because they became Muslims when they interacted with Moses. This is a, when when Moses, so Moses was before them, obviously. But That's you already I'm told me Moses was also for Egyptians. Still my when question I, stands. If Moses came for the same tribe, okay, then my question is like still the same question and I'm not getting answer from you. Can you please break it down for me to the level it will make sense? If Moses is for Israelites and for Egyptians and he is the first Muslim, then why do you need another first Muslims from Egyptians? Yeah, again, I gave you said, five names. Which one yeah. is really, really the first Muslim? Are those five names are the first, like, a joint, joint first Muslims? Okay, again. As I explained to you before, when I said Egyptians and Israelites, so, what I meant is I'm talking about the Israelites that were in Egypt. 
I'm not talking about the Egyptians who are not Israelite. So among the Egyptian Israelites, that's what I meant. So, my que what is my question? Yes, your, okay, your question is who was the first Muslim, like first, first Muslim. Okay, so who is the really, really first Muslim? Okay, Adam. Who got the first place, okay? Who got the Adam. first okay. place? Adam. Adam, Adam, Adam got yes. the first place. Okay, then can you tell me when Allah said Muhammad is the first Muslim, when Allah said Moses is the first Muslim, when Allah said some Egyptians are the first Muslim, when Allah said um, Abraham is the first Muslim, did Allah lie? Or did Allah intentionally misguided people? Or Allah failed with his communication skill? Okay, okay. Adam was the first, first Muslim, just generally. But those other people were the first Muslims from among their people. And I already gave you the explanation why. They were the first pe per people to receive revelation from among their people, making them the first to believe. That doesn't, it doesn't say among their people in the Quran. But the Quran also says that you can use your rationality and logic to understand it so using intellect and rationality you can understand that because they're the first people to receive revelations then they were the first people to believe making them the first muslims from among their people but the first first muslim was obviously the adam since he was the first man and he was a muslim i think i've explained this like okay. over and over again so um i know my gender says female okay i want you to know that um, I've got some qualifications. Beside those things, I can read and write. And when I read the things, I can ask the basic questions. Therefore, I strongly believe, I strongly believe I am using logic. Therefore, I am asking my questions again and again. And all I am expecting is to just tell me that Allah failed with his communication skill. That's the first one, since it seems that's what you are going for. Because you, can't, you told us really, really first one is the Adam. But when Allah meant Mo Muhammad, Moses, some Egyptians, and uh, um, Abraham is the first Muslim, Allah didn't mean that. Allah meant that in among his people. And then still, you have not given me any answer regarding the Mos people of Moses and some Egyptians. So it can be for us to move forward. Okay, it's been like, you've been here for 47 minutes 23 seconds for us to move forward can you please confirm that allah failed to communicate regarding who is the first muslim therefore that is the first contradiction of the quran and then we move to the next i don't think you want to understand i've watched your videos before and i think you genuinely don't want to understand when people explain things to you I'm going to explain one last time. Obviously, Adam will be the first Muslim because he was the first man and Then Muslim. why did Allah so, say Abraham yes, is the first it. Muslim? Yes. And why did Allah say yes. some Egyptians are the first Muslim? Why yes. did Allah say uh, Moses is the first Muslim? Why did Allah say Muhammad is the first Muslim? Which one is the first Muslim? That It sounds like among his people, for that people, would make... Like, that's just one word Allah could spend a little bit, like, just less than a second to pronounce that word. Muhammad could put it in the, in the, in, in the Quran. Or, or Allah could simply say, Adam is the real, really, really first Muslim. And then really second Muslim is, when you go with the biblical chronological order, is Abraham, and then Moses, and then Egyptians, and then at the end, Muhammad is the fifth Muslim. Okay, again, as I said, that it doesn't have to be explicitly mentioned in the text for you to come to that conclusion. Why? Again, I showed you a verse in the Quran which says, you can use your reason to understand the Quran. So I'm using my reason here to understand that these were obviously the first Muslims from among their people because they're the first to receive revelation from among their people. Is And I gave you an analogy of the Bible. So who did, want, who did Egyptians yes. receive the revelation from? Receiving revelation doesn't have to be direct. Like in Surah Hajj, it says that Aaron and Moses received the Torah, but Aaron didn't receive it directly. You can receive revelation directly or indirectly through, uh, what's it called, someone else or through a vessel. So some Egyptians, some Egyptians are also the messenger of Allah, correct? 
receiving revelation again doesn't have to be in the sense of wahid, wahid al nabi. It could just be a regular, just like, for example, when you read the Quran and someone gives da'wah to you, receiving the revelation that was sent to Prophet Muhammad. That's literally what it means. There's a direct, actually, for like a prophet, and then there's just an the indirect type of revelation. So I don't see a problem with that again. And when the Egyptians saw the miracle that Moses did, that's when they believed, which was actually a form of revelation anyway. Again, and as I said before, it doesn't have to be explicitly mentioned in the text of among their people. Because in the Bible, you don't have anywhere it where the Trinity is explicitly mentioned, but you believe in that because you believe it the concept is in it. It doesn't so say, sorry, it doesn't say, okay, among their people, even though I allowed you to, I allowed you to um, give your tafsir in it, okay? The verse itself, it doesn't say. Uh -huh. And Quran itself, okay, uh -huh. tells a detailed explanation of all things therefore yes. you don't need to add your own words for us to seriously move forward just give me just give me the statement that allah failed to communicate who is the first muslim or yes there are the contradictions in it then we move okay. forward because my, like it's been 50 minutes and like it's been painful right now plus like there is yes. a not good sound quality just like for us to move forward, just you need to do two statements. Allah, one of them is Allah failed to communicate who is the really first Muslim, or there are the contradictions. Pick one of them and then we move to the we move forward. Okay. Again, as I said, okay. You said that the Quran says it's detailed and explained. The Quran also gives you a way to explain the Quran. It or says a way to understand detailed the Quran. explanation of all yes things surah yes, 12 verse 111 yes yes so it gives you that's in yeah surah yusuf so basically it says that right and it also gives you a way on how to explain the quran and the quran says you can use your reason to understand the quran so there's no problem in using your reason to try and understand the quran so your reason and, fulfills the vocabulary of allah therefore can we for us to move forward please tell me there is a contradictions in the in the Quran the, with the first example I give it to you, or tell me Allah did not communicate well. No, I'm not gonna say any of those things because again, as I said, I think it's pretty well communicated that you can use your reason to understand the Quran, and it's pretty well communicated that these people were the first Muslims from among their people because they're the first to receive revelations or they're the first to proclaim. It's either revelation or pro proclamation. The, the, so the, they, are, they are all together two different words. They are all together two different words. Yes, yes, okay? I know. I know that. Yes, so, yes. And yes, you know I, that they are two different words, but still yes, you choose yes. to still you choose to use the same use this word. So which one is the first Muslim? Okay. Who again, is the first Muslim? Hassan, you're gonna keep repeating this. Oh, okay. Let me maybe try to break this down to you. Okay. Was Adam the first man in the Quran? Who is the first Muslim? Yeah, Adam, Abraham, some Egyptian, Moses, or Muhammad? Who is the first Muslim according to Islam? Adam was the first Muslim in terms of the fact that he was the first man that was created and he was a Muslim. But the other people, anyway, let me tell you something. The Quran, Allah himself never says that they're the first Muslims. It's the people themselves who's proclaiming that. So they're proclaiming that they're the first Muslims, and it's obvious that they're the first Muslims among their people because of proclamation or because they received revelation. So Again, I, if I ask you, if they, I ask you, they are two different words. We already talked about it. So now, yes, are, I know. I think are that's you fine. saying that's... now? Are you saying that now the word of man is end up in the Quran as the word of Allah, since the, those are the speech of people? Well, Allah will preserve the words of what people said. He'll say they said, and then he'll say what they said. It's still his speech, but it's also their speech. It's, he's just quoting someone. If I quote someone, what's the big deal with that? Oh, well, it's not big deal for you because you just put it in your essay and then you say this is this guy's sayings. This is the quotation from person X. But this is Allah who is giving the revelation. So who is the first Muslim? Again, as I said, all those other people other than Adam were the first Muslims from among their people because they were the first to proclaim that or they were the first to receive revelations from among their people. 
And why do I have this explanation? Because the Quran says you can use logic and reason to understand the Quran. It gives you the mechanisms to understand it. Let me ask you a question. Can you give me one verse in the entire Bible where it says the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one? Yeah. Can you just give me one verse that's not corrupt, not corrupted? Just one verse, very clear. The Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit are all God, and they're one. You won't find it, but you say the concept is in there. Likewise, can you give me a verse that says Jesus says, "I am God, so worship me." I am God in a Trinity, so worship me. You don't. It doesn't say that at all, but you believe that because of the concept. So I'm saying the same thing applies here. You guys use your sort of like usul. We, we say usul is principle. We use our principle that's given to us in the Quran to understand it. There's not a problem with this at all. So your your usul simply destroys Islam. Okay, my, I strongly believe my first contradiction is not being answered. You've got that's five people and they are all the first. Allah failed to tell everyone. Allah mm -hmm. failed to tell everyone that. Actually, among his people, that even though Allah states that it is well detailed, well explained in everything, still Allah does not use the very, very basic logic to tell who is the first Muslim. Five options. Allah knows nothing, probably knows best in this occasion. Therefore, I think in the uh, Surah 4, verse 82, to be, to be fulfilled, I gave you the first example, and still I did not get answer to that question. So, um, in the point, can I, can I uh, point two it? was um, the point two was um, angels. So, how many angels appear to Mary? Okay, I'll answer that. But before, I just want you to mention that you're insulting the Quran and Islam because Allah doesn't explicitly mention among His people. I am not. I am that, not. I am not insulting. I am explaining. No, no, so you I said I can use what's the what's logic. And then the information you give it to me simply tells me you can explain the things much better than Allah, even though Allah says his word is well detailed, well explained. Okay, again. That's a compliment God, to you. You should me, be saying thank you for the compliment. Yes, no problem. Your God says that uh, he's not the author of confusion, yet he fails to ever mention the Trinity explicitly anywhere in the New Testament or in the Old Testament. Okay. He never so, says this, this is the, the Trinity. No, that's not true. That's not true. Give me one verse. So, so this is this is the moment when Muslim no, notices that yeah, I brought up a question which I know, according to my criteria, shows my Quran is being corrupted and my religion is false. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attack their scripture because I cannot defend my scripture because all I did was showing that actually Allah is one of the worst worst communicator ever. Therefore, next thing is what I'm going to do is I'm going to critique the Bible. End of Matthew Gospel. Go and baptize them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Spirit. Okay? Yeah. Three, okay. three names being baptized. Three persons are being baptized in one name. So he's the, okay. that was the answer to your very basic question. But I'm yeah. afraid Can to I tell answer? you even though Can I answer? no even though you I are <laughs> I can't. okay continue sir. even even though you are kind of crying and changing the topic with knowing there are the problems in your Quran okay it, I, I, I'm just finding that's very very painful I just want you to know that sir so uh, now can you can you tell me? How many angels appear to Mary? Okay, yeah. Uh, again, as I said, I'll, I'm going to answer that. But again, you said that that last verse in Matthew says that of uh, the Trinity. You believe that those three are God and you believe those three are one. It never mentions that explicitly in the text. It just says, go do something in the name of these three people. Uh, uh, excuse so, me. Oh, pop, oh, pop, oh, pop, oh, pop. Do, do not use that junk words for my scripture. It's not go and do something. What does the verse say? Go and baptize them in the name of the Father, Son, and Spirit. Not in the name of the beings, in the name of the persons. I know Allah fails, very basic. Allah doesn't know what I believe as a Christian. Uh -huh. But I believe one God in three persons. Uh -huh. And the name of the three persons are mentioned there. You don't need to like, just cry about it, okay? Like, it is, it is disgrace. It is disgrace that Allah doesn't know and you are trying to fulfill the work of Allah again. 
that makes you like another Allah in here. That's like just different topic. But now answer my question on how many angels appear to Mary. Okay, you know, I'll leave you on the that one. Okay, so the verse in Surah Maryam, ver, uh, chapter 19, is not referring to the same occasion. It's not. One is referring to the conception of Jesus, and another is referring to just angels communicating with her. So, how many times angels went to um, Mary? You said how many angels? How many times? Angels visited Mary in which which occasions? Okay, so in Surah Ali Imran, chapter number three, she was. I think the reference is that she was praying in her uh, chambers, and she used to pray a lot. This is what the Tafsir explained that she used to pray a lot, and angels used to visit her. And then they were basically informing her that she was going to have a a son in the future. So this is what it's talking about. It's not talking about the conception of Jesus. When the conception of Jesus happened, that was one person or one angel. Not uh, three, uh, a multiplicity of angels. Where did you get that information? Okay, give me the verses and I'll explain it to you. Surah 3, verse, verse 42. Behold, okay. the angel said, O Mary, Allah has chosen you. Okay, verse, 44, verse 45. Behold, the angel said, O Mary, Allah gives you glad tidings. Okay, Surah 19. Then we sent her our angel, our Ru. Okay, he appeared before and and then she freaked out and that is the time when she's gonna have the baby announcement of the baby so how did you come to complete conclusion those are the different occasions okay how many number angels one, yeah, yeah. came to marry okay number one because they mentioned different or oh, what's it called the wordings are different whatever is mentioned in chapter 19 is not the exact same thing as uh chapter three in chapter three is saying completely different things it's saying uh, surely Allah has selected you and chosen you over the woman of the world. That, that's, another con that. that's another contradiction because what actually Angel said at the first place, Quran is supposed to be the only one person's testimony and that's supposed to be Allah. Allah doesn't even write down, I don't know, maybe Allah couldn't read and write, Allah doesn't even write down that what happened when Angel went to Mary. Therefore, we've got two different versions of the story. But my question is, so are you like chopping something or eating something? Sound quality is already bad and those chopping or cutting things is not being helpful either. So how many angels appear to Mary? Again, as I said, it's referring to co two completely different occasions because the wordings are different. That's very clear. And another thing. It's not very go, clear to me. Down, I'm, I'm, I'm explaining to you. If you uh, what's it called? If you scroll down, uh, what's it called? It says that, oh man, surely we have chosen you above the world. That's not mentioned in chapter 19. So it's obviously clear that it's referencing two different occasions just so, by the fact that the words are different. It's not the same. So um, tell, me, thing, tell, me, tell me the timeline between them. How am I supposed to know the timeline between them? Why do I need to know the timeline? So you don't know. But that's a very basic question. Quran is well detailed, well explained. You should be able to put your tafsir in it and then give me that version. Why am I supposed to know the timeline? You never have to the timeline. You just so when did, in, in Surah 3 mm -hmm. and Surah 19, what is the time gap? Okay, so give me the verse in Surah 19, please. Verse 17 to 19. Okay. So your account is disagrees with the Quran. I'm trying to understand your version so that I make sense that half Quran has been, uh, half the contradictions in the Quran is being justified so that Quran can be the word of Allah. Okay. How yeah. many angels again, appear said, to Mary? Okay, again, as I said, there are two completely different, uh, what's it called, wordings. And one is telling her that she's been chosen above That's the not world. my question. Also, yeah. That's not my you... question. Both of them, angels are coming to Mary regarding the baby Jesus. Okay? Yes, two question is, question is, is it angel or is it angels? How many angels we are talking about? It's both because it's not referring to the same like, event. It can't be both. So one of them is <laughs> one, other one is more than one. So, okay. is it okay, one okay. angel or is it more than one angel? Okay. It can't be both. Okay. If I give a story about one event 
and I'm uh, and I give a story about another event, they're not going to be the same. So the two events mentioned here are not the same event. That's very clear from the text. You see that the wording is different. It's giving her a command to prostrate. This is not mentioned in chapter 19. So it's obviously clear this is not referring to the same context. Okay, it's Dan, you need to, to no, context. you need to make your case to me and then give me the timeline. When did Surah 3 took place? When did Surah 19 took place? Because all I am hearing from you, Allah didn't even keep the details of what happened between Mary and angel or angels. Allah has okay. Allah needed admin um, admin person or PA and Allah couldn't get that. Therefore, He gives you the different accounts. Okay. Again, so how said, many angels the... appear to Mary? Again, I said it's referring to two different events. The evidence for this is that the wordings are literally completely different, and the amount of angels are completely different. And the fact that the commands mentioned in the Surah 19 are not the same as the one in Surah 3. So obviously from this you can tell it's referring to two different events. It is not obvious to me. Therefore, I am asking you with this well-detailed, well-explained Quran, yeah. how many um, angels appear to Mary regarding Mary to have a baby? Do you understand I just said it's referring to two different events, right? It's not no, I don't understand, sir. Do you understand that? I don't it's understand not that. It's the same event. It's referring to a different event. How many angels did Mary saw? Okay. In the first... Okay, let me try to explain to you. In the first time that the angels appeared to her, it was a multiplicity of angels. And in the second time, it was one. So oh. they appeared to her twice, and in one, it was a few, and in one, it was just one singular angel. What's the problem with that? Both of them is the announcing the birth of Mary. Is, did Mary saw one angel and she had a chit chat with one angel or she freaked out from one angel or did Mary saw more than one angel more than one angel and had a chit chat or freaked out from that angel is it one or is it more than one which one Allah meant to say okay is referring to one is referring to when the spirit was actually like when the conception of Jesus actually happened, and another is just referring to like sort of like you a are just repeating analysis. the same thing by not answering my question. Yeah, sir. that is the so answer. So for to us question. to move forward, for us to move forward, would you please be kind enough and then tell me, we don't know what Allah really meant to say. Are there one yeah. angels or more than one angels? That's the first option. Yeah. Second yeah. option is, yes, there are contradictions. Or the third option, Allah failed with his communication skill again. And then we move forward. Okay. Again, anyone like who's honest, who's watching this, just listen. Because I know she's not going to want to listen. Okay. If there are two events or two surahs ref referencing different events, the wordings are different and the commands are different. Both of them are, both so, of them are for the announcing of the Jesus. Both of them are, Mary is going to have the baby. That's, the, that, both of them are the same, okay? Uh -huh. So, mm -hmm. Allah is, the, Allah is the, so, here's the thing. When we look at the Christian scripture, for example, for the Gospels, okay? They are written by four different individuals. Therefore, it is normal that we see, stories are taking different lines but author of the Quran is only one being and that one being is supposed to be all-knowing all-powerful that one being is supposed to remember how many angels he sent the Mary and what conversation took place for the announcing of the Jesus but what I'm seeing is no and we, I, I really want to move forward. I'm, I'm serious, like yeah, getting headache it. right yeah, now be because you are intentionally not expect accepting that, that yes, there are contradictions. Can I, can not I saying explain? Allah fails with his communication skills. And simply all I'm hearing is like angel and angels, even one of them is one and other one is more than one. They are the same thing. Okay. Can I explain really quickly? Again, you said that they're both referring to the announcement. That's incorrect. One is referring to the actual conception. Because in chapter 19, it mentions the actual conception of, uh, what's it called? The spirit breathing into her. And the other one just mentions the announcement. 
So one is referring to Surah the 66 event. is the one which angels angel is greeting to her. Ruh. And also what's it called? Num chapter 19 as well. It literally says in chapter 19, she conceived him, then she retired with him to a remote why, place. Why, why did you come to the conclusion that they just took place at that moment? What? You said, why Why do I come to the conclusion how, that how it took did, place how at that did, moment? How did Mary make the baby just the same day? Wasn't she pregnant for nine months? It's not referring to or the like... same day. It's not, it's not referring to the same day. That's what you, you told me. Do you know conception is different from actually giving birth, right? When you conceive, do you, you know this? When the did woman. she conceive? Yeah, she conceived when the angel when? sent her. What do you mean when? Do you want a date? 19, 20, what do you want? A date? When did she conceive? In chapter 19. When? And in 66 as well, it mentions the same event. And in the chapter 3, it's not mentioning the conception, it's just the announcement. The Chapter 19 has an announcement and the fulfillment of the announcement. In chapter 3, it's just the announcement. So, chapter 19 until verse 20, okay, 21, is the part 22. I am focusing, okay? From well, 22, 22, from 22, we get to hear Mary is now pregnant, okay? So, my question is, for the announcement of the Jesus' birth, how many angels came to Mary? That should be, like, seriously very simple. I, like, I've, I've got headache right now. Yes, uh, of course. Again, one is referring to the conception and the other is referring to just the announcement. Why? It says, literally says in the text, That so she conceived him, then she retired with him to a remote place. She conceived him. So this, in this context, is referring to the conception. The other one doesn't mention the conception. It just jumps to straight verse to Verse 19. Book. Go to the verse 19. When in the verse 19, it tells her that you are going to have a baby. Okay? Yes. You are going to have a pure son. How many angels told that to her? Okay. The first time it was a few. And the second time it was one. Because the second time is referring to okay, the conception. Okay. Few and, and the few and one are different numbers. Yes. It's not okay, referring so to the same few event. and one are different numbers which one yeah again as i said it's not referring to the same event one is referring to the conception the okay, other one is sir? referring to the announcement sir so this is this is not going very well okay let me let, 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 let me take it very the basics can you please can you please do you have a criteria from the quran you can tell me that bible cannot be the word of god because there are contradictions in it it's have you got that verse? Have you, you got the verse? The listen, listen. Have you got the verse in the Quran? You've got 6,236 verses. Can you point me the verse which tells you you need to reject the Bible? Bible cannot be the word of God because there are contradictions on it. While acknowledging, for you to be Muslim, you must believe in the Bible. Okay. So, what is the chapter and verse number for that verse? Is this a topic or are we still dealing with the Mary and the no, angels? No, uh, you, 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 like, you are giving me a headache. You, like, it just, it's been over one hour, 13 minutes, and I got nowhere. All I got is, like, you messed up, Allah messed up, all that thing. So, I'm just trying to figure out main reason you called. I will keep it maximum five more minutes and then we will move on. So, can you please tell me the Quranic verse tells you to reject the Bible because there are the contradictions in the Bible? Okay. Okay, go to chapter 482 again, as I said. Chapter we'll 482 doesn't talk about the Bible. Or, okay, let's read if it, it let's does read talk it. about the Bible, can you please show me which word is the Bible in that word? It's funny because you tell us that the Quran says to believe in the Bible. The Quran never mentions the word Bible, but it's fine, it's okay. Anyway, it says, do they, okay, again, as I said, there's explicit evidence and there's implicit evidence. Okay, so the Quran is saying that if it had been from it, meaning the Quran, had been from any other than Allah, you would have found within it much contradiction. Okay, that's so for that the Quran. It, yes, yes. You let that's me for the Quran. That yes, is not my criteria. Why are you stopping? Okay? So, you stopping do you I'm, have... I'm because you are repeating the same thing. I, I really got headache I'm, right I'm, now. Okay? I'm still about to elaborate so, on No, no, no. Do you have the Quranic verse which tells you to reject the this Bible? The reject the book called Bible, okay? Or the Injil or the Torah... Because 
there are contradictions in it. Okay, again, I'm trying to, I was about to explain why I said this. It says, if it, meaning the Quran had been from any other than Allah, you would have found contradiction. Meaning, if a book has to be from God, then it would be not have any contradictions in it. You claim the Bible is the word of God or from God. So it cannot have any contradictions in it. So I'm saying the Quran is basically telling me it's implicitly. There's a difference between explicit and implicit. It's implicitly telling me that if a book is from other than God, it cannot have any contradictions. That is your criteria. That is your criteria for the, the Quran. Right that is your criteria for the Quran. That is not my criteria, okay? So first of all, let's identify that. That is your criteria for the Quran. And there is only zero verse in the Quran tells you don't trust in the Bible or don't believe in the Bible because there are contradictions in the Bible. No, there is zero. Okay. So now let give me you. give you, let me give you the biblical criteria. Okay. And then after that, we will be finishing because that's not my criteria. The junks you are bringing it up. Turn with me. Second Timothy chapter three. Wait, hold on, hold on. 2 Timothy, Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 and 16. Who's writing this? Who's writing this? Sir, 2 Timothy, second Timothy chapter, chapter 3, verse 16. Is it Jesus or God who's saying this? I'm just asking. This is the word of God, sir. Open, Timothy, open, Timothy? open, open, 2 Timothy, who wrote, who chapter wrote Timothy? 3. Paul wrote Timothy. Is Paul validated by Jesus? Do you have evidence of this? I'm just sir, asking, did Jesus ever mention Paul sir, or anything? Sir, excuse me, excuse me. Quran is fall in love with my Bible. You got me yes. zero, zero look, reference look. from the Quran. Shush now. I've got headache right now, okay? I need you to shush. You, you, so, you there can't are, so listen. It's okay. Can you listen to this? You Go gave ahead. me zero reference from the Quran. Tells you. To not trust the Bible, but because there are contradictions in the Bible, there is nothing. Okay, Quran is falling in love with the Christian scripture, and now I am telling you what is the criteria for Christian scripture. I cannot follow your criteria for the Quran. Quran tells if Quran is not from Allah, there will be much contradictions. I gave you the three contradictions. Okay, that was yeah. much for the number yeah, you tell. gave me was three. I gave you the, those contradictions. Now, for the Bible, okay, listen this very carefully. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15 and 16, okay? How from infancy have you known the Holy Scripture, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus? All Scripture is God's breed, and it is useful for teaching, for rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that men of God may be true, truly equipped for every good work. That is the criteria for my scripture. Who gives that criteria? Everything. Bible, who, gives, asking, Bible gives that, that scripture. Bible, who, Bible gives who, that like, criteria. Who's writing Timothy? You Bible write gives Timothy. that criteria. Uh, Timothy is written Timothy? by Paul. Paul, uh, didn't Jesus mention Paul? Um, does Quran have a problem with the book of Timothy? The, the Quran has a problem with anything that contradicts it. Very simple. No, Sh show me, yes, show me that. Sh <coughs> Sorry, okay. show me no that problem. verse. No problem. Show me the verse in the Quran. Quran is expressing, Quran has a problem with Timothy. Allah doesn't Timothy, even you know want who Timothy, Timothy mentioned explicitly. Allah doesn't even know who that, Paul is. That is not the Quran. So, yet, yet Quran talks about disciples of Jesus are being made um, spare, um, superior to all. Okay, hold on. Is it, do we believe that does the Quran ever mention it? No, 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 no. That's... Give me the reference okay. where Allah expresses Allah has a problem with the Timothy chapter 3, all, all of the Timothy, but these specific 3, 15, 16, and 17 are the references I read it to you. Tell me so you want to where Allah that. says yeah, Allah has a problem with the book of Timothy. Okay. Okay. It's not going to explicitly mention, obviously, Why? The Why? Timothy. Quran is well detailed, well Just explained. Just like the, the Bible doesn't you, mention you that told me, You told me you have but, a problem with this book. Do you know much better than Allah? Okay. I'm Do you know much better than Allah? 
Do wait, I'll give you the reference. Sheikh Google is not gonna help you because you need to get help from Allah, not from Sheikh Google. Mohammed okay. can't help you because he wasn't okay. even aware who was who he is. I've never seen you this frustrated. Calm down. It's it's not a problem. We'll both calm here, okay? Okay. Again, as I said, that the Quran has a problem with anything that contradicts no. it. Give me the yes. give me the Quranic yes. reference. Give me the Quranic reference. Quran has a problem with the Timothy. That's the first thing. And then second thing, give me the Quranic reference. Quran has a problem with Paul. And then thirdly, give me the Quranic references where Quran says, listen this very carefully, where Quran says it came to contradict the Christian scripture. Okay. Again, as I said, please, I never said first, the Quran said that. Please repeat yeah, my I'm, questions I'm first. Explain. Yeah, I'm going to explain to you. The Quran obviously is not going to explicitly mention that, or oh, Timothy is oh, not, or... Uh, okay, not well, why that. is that? Oh. Why Just is like that? Okay. Because no, because that so, seems to me. me listen, listen. So no no no. Don't, don't play that game to me now. Okay. No, so, no no no. Don't play crying face to me. Because, so because now here's the here's the problem. Here's the problem. You turn off the live stream. You express that you know much better than Allah, and instead of keeping you accountable, I'm keeping your Allah accountable. Because sadly, 1.8 billion of people are following him and staying hungry for him all day. And your Allah fails to tell me he has a problem with my scripture. Yet, you tell me you have a problem with my scripture. I'm keeping Allah accountable. And simply I am asking Allah to tell me if there is a problem in my scripture, especially with the Timothy, Allah should verbalize that. Since you know much better than Allah. If Allah has a problem with Paul, Allah should verbalize that. Thirdly, Allah should verbalize that Quran comes to contradict the Christian scripture. Yet Quran screams out, Quran comes to confirm the Christian scripture. Surah 5, 43 to 48, Quran not only fall in love with Christian scripture, Quran pours his heart for the Christian scripture. So, Dear Mr. Allah, can you please point me the verse from the Quran regarding okay. the answer to my basic questions? So I'm not trying to I'm trying to break this down slowly. Does the Bible mention the crucifixion? Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. Excuse me. No, 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 no. Give me, give me listen, listen my questions carefully. Listen my questions very carefully. Where is it in the Quran? There are 6,236 verses, not one or two verses. There are over 6,000 verses. One verse should come alongside with you and then express that you have the same knowledge or similar knowledge to Allah, word of Allah, that Allah has a problem with the book of Timothy. Allah has a problem with Paul. Allah has a problem with Christian scripture. Because I told you, Quranic criteria, uh, uh, Quranic criteria to be word of Allah is much. There needs to be much contradiction in it. I gave you three. Biblical criteria is all scripture is God's breath and it is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that men of God may be truly equipped for every good work. That is the criteria of Christian scripture. So, last time I'm asking you, are you able to give me those three references I have asked you? Okay. I never said that the Quran says it contradicts Timothy. I said that anything that contradicts the Quran, the Quran has a problem with it. That's what I said. So, you don't have the references. Okay. I never claimed I that. Have, I, have I? Spent, I have spent one hour, 23 minutes, 54 seconds with you. Can yes. you please? Did I claim can that? you please? Did I say that the but Quran says Can you please? Him? Shush now, I really got a headache. Can you I'm please, asking. next time when you call me, get me the references, and then we take it from there, okay? If the, remember, sense. remember, the moment you have a problem with my scripture, you need to know, that means Quran is false book, Allah is false God, Muhammad is false prophet. Because I told you, Quran pours its heart towards Christian scripture. Allah, Muhammad, and Quran is fall in love with my scripture. 
if my scripture is corrupted at not and not reliable, Quran is false book again because Muhammad's wow. supposed to be prophesied in my scripture. Why? Why? Muhammad's yes. supposed to be prophesied in my scripture. If Muhammad if hmm. Muhammad shouldn't, if Muhammad is not there, or if Muhammad is there, still that confirms that my, my scripture is supposed to be reliable. No, it and what we have here is, you are going against your scripture while Surah 2, Surah 3, Surah 5, screams out, Quran comes to confirm the, my book. Confirm your book my book. Your book confirm your my book. book. Therefore, book therefore best way to move called? forward, best way to move forward, I have given you questions. Question. I have yes. given you questions. So please take your time. Yeah, I'll answer. Find I'll answer to the find answer to the my questions. Yes, and then by the grace of God, I will have live stream next week on Friday. And then call it again and then we pick up where we left. Because yes. one hour twenty-five minutes thirty-four seconds is just went nowhere. Beside I I am sure individuals in the chat are getting headache as well as you are getting headache because you simply become much better than Allah and you know much yeah. better than I, Allah. Yeah. In, that note, sir, in that note, in that note, sir, I'm going to give you 20 seconds to say goodbye and make your last statement. You've got 20 seconds. Okay. So you said that I said that the Quran says Timothy uh, is corrupted or the Quran says don't trust Timothy. I never said that you can go back. I never said the Quran says don't trust Timothy. I said the Quran has a problem with anything that contradicts it. I never said the Quran says the Quran says don't follow Paul. I never said this as well. But you're saying you're asking for references for something I never claimed. So your time is up. Place. Yeah. So that's it. Your time is up, sir. Please. Um, honest Christians. Honest Christians. Please pull yourself to together. Get, get some answer. Get some answers, and then we pick up. We pick up where we left, sir. You're finished, Hassan. Honest Christians, watch this and you'll see the truth. Thank you very much for calling in, sir. So, um, so he's the, he's my, um, he's my problem. Let me get rid of the Skype sign. Um, he's the problem. I cannot force the Quranic criteria into the Bible. Yes, it is for the Quran. That if there is a contradictions in the Quran, much contradictions, that Quran cannot be the word of God. And the call I expressed, three is much. I gave him three examples. And what we have here is, with these three examples, we looked at only two of them. And conclusion was, Allah failed with his communication skills. Actually, Allah didn't mean what he meant and muslim kola was able to put his own tas on tafsir to try to make sense of the word of allah because he was using his logic when allah failed with the basic um, vocabulary then muslims are forcing their own interpretation for their book to christian scripture by oh so Quran cannot be the word of God because there are contra much contradictions in it. Therefore, I will find the contradictions in the Bible and then I will make Bible not the word of God. Bibli biblical criteria is very, very different. Overall, Bible tells me Father's love towards humanity and how the Son put that together. How the Son demonstrate love to humanity. It is huge love letter, which has been backed up by history, by archaeology. And sadly, sadly, Quran comes and confirms that. Yet Muslims turn up and then say, oh, actually, I cannot trust the Bible. I know you are reading the Timothy account, but I cannot trust that because that's not Jesus. That's like the argument babies don't even use anymore. But what we see is Muslims are using. Overall, the bottom line is, if Bible is corrupted, okay, or Bible is not reliable, if there are the contradictions in it, Allah is false God, Muhammad is false prophet, Quran is false book, because Muhammad 
supposed to be in the Bible. Okay, the Bible which is in the hands of the people in 7th century. If Bible is not corrupted, it is still the same thing. Allah is false God, Muhammad is false prophet, Quran is false book, because Quran comes to confirm the Bible, yet um, contradicts it. That is all very much sad. But anyway, that's how it goes. I, I find it's very... Um, I find it's very much um, upsetting when Muslims simply use Muslims simply use their criteria and force their criteria on Christian scripture. Not acceptable at all for them to be good Muslim. Plus, if they don't, sorry, sorry, hold on a minute. Um, if if they don't trust in the Bible and they don't believe in Bible, how can they be Muslim at the first place? Because for them to identify themselves as a Muslim, they must believe in the Bible. But that's how we end up. Hello, sir. Hi, Hatun Um can, it's you, can you tell us who you are and how can we help you, sir? Hatun uh, can you hear me? I can hear you, yes. Uh, it's Umut. I, I can see, but people don't see who you are. Uh, okay, so uh, I'm ex-Muslim. Uh, I'm Sheikh, and uh, I just want to tell very quick um, reply back to this guy who just called you if you allow me sure Go on. Um, when he called you first he said you asked him are you muslim or christian and he said he's dazed yeah so he rejected muhammad he rejected his own prophet yeah but after that and, no after that when i said okay what do you believe what does that mean he said he believes in muhammad after that like when you unpacked when we asked mm -hmm. him to unpack, he expressed that he believes in Muhammad. But he, but in in the beginning, he said he's dazed. Yeah, it's okay so, in Islam to lie. So that anyway. And he also he also said he believes in a little bit of everything. He said he also believes in Jesus. So in, according to his book, he should believe in Isa, not Jesus. So there is again contradiction. He's he's out of Islam. He's trying to defend Quran, but he has no idea that what mistakes he did. And there was at least three or four people in that room, and four of them couldn't even debate you, yet you're alone and you try to explain them what's going on. So these guys are really, I, I just feel sorry for them. And I would like to thank you. It was an amazing job once again. And that, that was it. That's why I just so, wanted to go. Uh, brother, let me ask you a question. Have you been watching the live stream since the um, gentleman since called in? Yes, yes, okay. yes. Sir. So, what the, what is the answer you received regarding who is the first Muslim? Uh, I I understood from him that Adam was first Muslim, uh, what he said. But I, there is another contradiction with this. I want to know that if Adam did shahada or, or not, because without shahada you cannot be Muslim. Am yeah, I right or correct? Yeah, that, yeah. Um, uh, in the Shahada, Adam needs to identify Muhammad as the prophet. It is same exactly. for the Moses, same for uh, Abraham, same for others. So you exactly. you, you, you understood that um, Adam is the first Muslim. So that means uh, Muhammad wasn't first Muslim. Uh, Abraham wasn't first Muslim, correct? Mm, correct, yes. Okay. This is exactly um, what he said. Yes. My sec the second question I was trying to get is um, how many angels... Um, came yes. to uh, Mary for the announcement of Jesus. Um, what was the answer you received? Uh, he said first uh, one, and then he said few, few angels. But it can't be one or two, one and two. Which one? Exactly. So who is the first uh, America president? According to him, who is it? Obama or George Bush? Who, who is it? So it doesn't make any sense when he says this kind of thing. So he says first, and then he says few. So obviously, we don't understand. And he said also that he never watched you. I, I did my notes here while I was watching you. He said he never watched you, so he doesn't know your style in the beginning when you explained to him. But then, later on, it's recorded, it's live. Then he said he doesn't know you in the beginning, but then he said he watched your videos before. So these guys are liars. As we always say, without lies, Islam dies. And he proved it. Um, those are the individuals who need our prayers. 
for exactly. uh, Lord to bring them on their knees um, so that they can see Lord Jesus Christ is the eternal Son of God and by believing Amen. in Him they will Amen. have eternal life. So we don't have much higher moral stand. We don't expect higher moral standards from um, individuals who are not um, Christians. So we can't force our moral standards on them. But that's exactly. something we've got to pray for him. He he called in diff under the different name, but I think the name he wanted to public to be public was Omar. So please do remember him in your prayers. And I will do. And good, I, I, good listening I will skills, do. I will brother. Do. Say another. Good listening skills. Uh, of course. <laughs> Um, we're learning from the best um, have you got anything else to add or that was all and once again it was an amazing job you handled it very well and uh, so you know I just feel sorry for him and a uh, bunch of Abduls in one room couldn't even debate to one strong lioness Christian lady like you so we are proud of you and thank we you. love you thank you thank you brother Thank you, thank you, sister. Bye bye. Um, I wouldn't um, agree with Umut's comments on it, but um, bottom line is, um, yeah, this is how it turned up. So, officially, actually, really, really officially, we have uh, we've been live for two hours twenty one minutes. Let me go to chat and then see if. People are alive. Anyone kind of died or suffering right now? Please don't tell me if that is the case. <laughs> but just put that in a way that I it may, it will make sense to me. Um. Anyway, I think I can have one more call. I've got one, two, three, four people apparently called in. Um. While I was on the Skype, but I can have one more call if anyone wants to call in uh, if there is no call um, I can't even remember the main point I was making at the beginning because right now it's not only my head hurts my brain hurts I could I could um, um, anyway um, yeah as I, as I was saying I find it's like very uh, sad when when Muslims acknowledges that Quran cannot be the word of God because it discredits the history and all of those kind of things. And then when you ask them to reference, a main reason they are saying that is like, if, he, I think he's, he's the reasoning, he's the reasoning. Muslims are looking into the Quran, into the Bible, and they're not finding their prophet. Or, as the first um, um, beloved sister called, expressed that Muhammad is prophesied as a false prophet, and Muslims don't want to go with that one. So Muslims are not able to find their prophet. What, what they do is they say, okay, if Muhammad is not in the Bible, that means Quran is false. But Quran can't be false because I am Muslim, and even though I never looked into it, everyone told me Quran is the word of Allah. So... I'm sorry for the headaches people are having. I apologize for that, but sometimes, like, it turns up this way. Um, sorry about that. So they, they are saying, okay, I, I was told Quran is the word of Allah. I was told that by my sheikhs, by my imams, by my mother, by my father, by my friends. Everyone says the same thing. Then, oh, but according to this book, Muhammad is supposed to be in the Bible. Muhammad is not in the Bible. By default, I cannot come to the conclusion that Quran is false book. Only conclusion I need to come is Bible is corrupted. That's the only conclusion I can come. Therefore, I need to find the reasons to make a case that Bible is corrupted. And since my book is fall in love with the Bible, only reason, only case I can make regarding the Bible is I need to come up with my own version and my own interpretation 
to make a case that Bible is corrupted. And that's what they do. That's what they do. But um, be very confident uh, that there are um, Bible is very much reliable. Even scholars expresses that today there is nothing historically we found can discredit the informations in the Bible. British Museum screams out regarding the reliability of the Bible with the artifacts. History screams out with the reliability of the Bible. And we don't need it, but, um, sorry, and we do have more than enough manuscripts confirms the reliability of the Bible. Plus, sadly, we do have the Quran which comes and then confirms the Bible. Therefore, just it doesn't it doesn't work with us. It doesn't work with us to come up. Yeah, your Bible is not reliable. And overall, overall, it's not only Bible is reliable, but Bible story of the Bible. It's so wonderful. It does affect the life of individuals because it is the story of God and his love towards his people. What we see is which is very much actually amazing. When God creates men and women and individuals are choosing to walk away from God. While Father is loving the Son before the foundation of the world in the fellowship of Holy Spirit, fully satisfied in himself, does not step back and leave human beings what the, whatever they want to do. God does, without any obligation, calls his people to himself. Calls his people to himself. Calls his people to himself. Speaks to his people and then says, turn to me, turn to me. I cannot give you up. I cannot give you up. But Something in our heart is desired and focused on something else. We not only turn away from God, but we also run away from God towards other things. That is the moment Father sends his one and only Son. And that one and only Son, without any obligation, steps into this broken world lives among us, gives himself for us, so that it's not only he gives him, himself for us, but he comes and then meets, meets with us where we are. And grave couldn't hold him. On the third day, he rise. With that, he tells those people who are intentionally running away from him, whose heart is behind, uh, behind others, he turns to them and then he asks those people to be his. It's like amazing wedding story, like shepherd king steps into the world and then tells people, to be his bride. If you think about like logic of cosmos, king of universe comes and then tells you, will you marry me? Not only will you marry me, but will you be mine? And that is the moment, that is the moment when husband says to the wife or future wife, all I am is yours, and all you are is mine. All of righteousness of God suddenly upon us. We have taken his righteousness. We are That moment we are declared his. We are declared righteous, the people who were running away from God. And the bride says to the husband, all I am yours. All I have is yours. All of her sins, all of her wrong desires, sinful desires, guilt, ugliness, 
goes on to the shepherd king. That is the moment happens when eternal son of father give, gives himself once for all on the cross. Once for all. Would you be mine? And would you be mine? That's all he's asking his people. Yes, there are historical evidence. There are manuscript evidence. There are archaeological evidence confirms the reliability of the Christian scripture but also there is an amazing love or marriage story in the Bible between God and his people that is the moment when individual says no I don't want that no I don't want that I want to run away from that because as you are declared in front of, as you are declared righteous in front of holy God, you know, as a sinful, guilt, guilty person, there was nothing you did, there was nothing you did to make the shepherd king to fall in love with you. There is nothing in your, all your head is like your, sin and your guilt yet logic of cosmos fall in love with you and he gave himself for you and we live in a time we live in a century where where we kind of say uh, sorry i can see there is someone's email address in the chat can someone delete that um i don't think it is very wise to put your personal details on the chat when you, we live in a century where we want to do things in our way and that makes us feel comfortable and good. But what we have is, we, we did nothing, we did nothing to deserve that love. We were loved without doing anything. And that is hard, therefore it is difficult to give up. Everything is done for us once for all. And everything is done for us once for all in God. Yet on the other, other side, not only we are declared righteous, not only we are forgiven, we are even called his friends, friend of God. Alongside of that, we are offered place in the bosom of the Father, and that's not enough. We are offered to have fellowship for eternity with God, with triune God. Then you come to the other side, an ideology out there, and the highest place you can get in that ideology is being a slave to Allah. And if you are lucky enough, you might see him far distance as you see the moon. No fellowship, no love, no any affection. All you get is the highest place of slave. Then the question is, would you like to be identified as forgiven, loved son of God? Or would you like to be identified as the slave of Allah? It is a choice and those choices have the consequences. And you, you want to make right choice S sadly it is sad um beautiful sad our god does not force himself to anyone so you when you you have a uh, right to reject or receive him and with that there are the consequences you've got to handle it Very simple, very simple. Opening your hands and then saying, I accept Jesus is the eternal son of father. He give himself for me. I've got nothing else to hold on beside his love. Or, yep, I will hold these books uh, called Islam and now I want to be a slave of Allah. That is a choice. That is a choice we all need to make. And thank God by his grace, 
I have chosen to be the son of God versus there are individuals still stuck as the slaves of Allah they need to hear the, this wonderful good story Lord Jesus Christ offers them um, anyway so um, oh my god it's been 2 hours 34 minutes 54 seconds I think I think we can finish the evening here um, I can't remember but can um, if brother Phil is in the chat can I just get confirmation that he is still doing um, he still has his admin job um, I can't see that from this side um, because there was a problem with the Miss Sharia chip yesterday I don't want him to lose his right of moderate moderating if he can confirm that that will be helpful if he's not here that's absolutely fine like he doesn't no, no, no none of admins has to be here um, it is just out of their grace they are here um, I'm guessing he's not here that's absolutely fine so I'll figure that out in different ways um, anyway um, thank thank you everyone who called in um, and thank you everyone who tried to call in oh thank you sister and thank you everyone who tried to call in hopefully we will take your calls in the time what's best for you next week and um, dear beloved ones um, thank you very much for joining us in another evening hopefully we will see you at speakers corner or we will see you at the bosom of the father or we will see you in another live stream uh, may Christ crucified silent you with his love until we see you all God bless you